If everybody would stand that feels like standing, why? Turn to 46.
the ages roll. I'll keep on praising him, and my voice will never tire or grow and my song shall ever be praise the Lamb who died for me and I'll sing it while ages shall roll when I'm in Amen. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to see you out. Good to be able to be out. I tell you, it's uh, feel like somebody put the air conditioner on on us, didn't it? And it feels good. Uh, and uh, I'm glad I'm alive to see another foul. Well, it ain't foul yet, but it ain't far from foul. It's just, uh, uh, when is it? This next week, I believe it's uh, uh, legally foul, but I, I'm glad I'm here. If I wasn't here, I'd be in a better place. I'd be in heaven. And I, I appreciate that. Good to see you out. Good to be able to be out. I tell you, it's good to be able to be at the church. And um, I appreciate the Lord. I appreciate you. appreciate His goodness. We want to go to the Lord in prayer. We've got a lot to pray about. Let's pray for the service tonight. Pray for the sick. Uh, there's a lot, to, a lot in this community and this church. And a lot of kin folks and neighbors we got that uh, needs our prayers. And I wonder if anybody's got an object. I want to mention anybody. Amen. Amen. I think they put that on back in John C. Hospital. They did. Let's remember Daniel and, and, and that family. They, they, re they really need our prayers. Amen. And uh, let's, let's remember them. Anybody else? Well, remember young baby. Amen. Uh, Amen. Special. Amen. 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 Roger, you pray with us. Here's the Father, that was <laughs> 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 the 
If you got your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Psalms, chapter 19. I've been studying some over in Psalm 91. I come to higher say in 91, but I, I want to say uh, in Psalms, chapter uh, 19. One of the great, uh, uh, the great Psalm David wrote. He did, David didn't write all the Psalms, but he wrote a lot of them. And uh, you can see... Uh, David was a unique man. He was, uh, uh, he stood out. His uh, psalms stand out. He was either uh, uh, asking God to defend him from his enemies, or he's either praising God. He wasn't halfway. Uh, he was either, uh, uh, to me, you may see him different, but he's either down or he's up. And uh, <coughs> David uh, was a man uh, after God's own heart. I but. Uh, let me read, I, I, I'll just read it all. We want to talk to you uh, from uh, verse 7 and 8 and 9. I bet the, it's so good, I hate to skip some of it. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and the words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of the chamber and uh, rejoicing out as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightened to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, that much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them in the servant warn, is the servant warned, and in the keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thy me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You know, I want to say uh, uh, a thing about in verse 13 there. He said, uh, he, said uh, he, he said, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. You know, there's several different kinds of sin. They sin a, co a commission, a sin of omission. They is presumptuous sins, they is, uh, uh, they is hidden sins, and so forth. Uh, but he said that I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let me, and I'm not going to uh, preach on it or nothing, but 
Let me say that David never got over the sin uh, that he committed uh, when he had the affair with Bathsheba. I mean, it stayed with him. Psalms 38. Uh, he said that it was the first thing that he thought of in the morning, the thing that uh, touched his whole body. Uh, but sin, uh, even though David was uh, forgiven, Psalms 51, I believe that uh, you can read and see that uh, God forgive him and David, it never left his mind. And it's like I've told you, uh, you can sin and you can get forgiveness of sin. But the consequences of sin stay with you. Uh, that They don't just uh, uh, go away. Uh, but I want you to notice in verse uh, 7. It says the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. You know, uh, we, uh, uh, there is much can be said about the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord they, uh, is, uh, uh, there's a lot of commandments in the Bible. Some uh, Bible scholars say they 613, and some say they 630 or uh, 633. I don't know exactly how many, uh, but I know there's a lot of commandments down through the Bible. Uh, but I know that the Bible is right. I don't have to wonder about it. I don't have to ask about it. Uh, but I know that the Word of God, uh, the Bible said the law of the Lord is perfect, and right this uh, contains the law of the Lord. And uh, we are not under uh, the Old Testament law. The Bible said that uh, the ordinances that were against us was nailed to the cross. Uh, but that don't diminish when God uh, wrote the Ten Commandments in, uh, uh, in stone and uh, given to Moses and then uh, they, they're, still, uh, they're still in effect. You say, are we to keep the Ten Commandments? Listen, uh, if you live a Christian life, uh, you go past the Ten Commandments. Say, uh, uh, you love the Lord your God. You don't take His name in vain. You don't commit adultery. You don't lie. You don't steal. And you say, oh, well, I might do some of them things. Somebody has done some of them. Uh, but there is forgiveness. But uh, it, uh, a Christian life will surpass uh, the Ten Commandments. But the law of the Lord is the Word of God. Uh, you know, uh, we... I don't know how to say this, but I'm afraid we treat this Bible too lightly. Uh, we take it uh, too much for granted. We uh, don't read it enough. I mean, if we, uh, we wonder, and uh, I, don't say this to, uh, I don't say this to vilify anybody, but all the time we ask, how would we like to have services like we used to have? What's happened to us? How have we gone downhill? I'll tell you. Uh, used to, you'd drive down the road, or you'd walk down the road, you'd see people sitting on the porch uh, late in the evening or reading their Bible. Uh, you'd share them a praying out in the barn and up on the hill. And, uh, and they, uh, they, had a, uh, they had a knowledge of God, a relationship with God. And the way they got that uh, was through the Word of God. Uh, folks, listen. Uh, we talk about in the ace uh, uh, there's so many uh, things are going on today about uh, getting saved and about salvation. He's, uh, uh, you got to do this. You got to join this church. You got to. Uh, there's so much confusion going on. Uh, no wonder people don't understand about getting saved by the grace of God. And God makes it so plain in this book that a child, a fool, should not err therein. I mean, it is so plain in the Word of God uh, that we are to believe, but not to. Uh, uh, believe plus something or believe uh, minus something, just believe. Now, uh, I'm not talking about just a believing in God. Uh, probably uh, before I was saved, I, I believe there's a God. And uh, I believe that uh, this, and, and I believe all the necessary thing. Uh, but when I got saved, hey, you don't get saved but one way. Uh, there's just one way. Jesus said, I am the door, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. I no man cometh unto the Father except by me. Out of the Bible said, There is no other name given under heaven whereby that man might be saved. Uh, you see, there's just one way. Uh, the world's a hollering uh, that there's ways and different ways that people to get saved. Uh, folks, just one way. Uh, you got to get born again. Now, when you got born the first time, uh, there was just one way. Now, you wasn't found in under a cabbage leaf. The stork didn't bring you. 
Or it uh, wasn't a great big clap of thunder, and there you was. Uh, brother, they was a birth, and you can ask any woman in here that's had children, uh, they can tell you exactly uh, that there is just one way that you can bring a baby uh, into this world, and that's through the birth. Uh, that's through, uh, that's through, and there's just one way of getting born again. Uh, there's just one way to heaven. The only way you can get to heaven uh, is to get born again, born by the Spirit of God, and therefore, uh, uh, that's the only way. And we find that way in the Word of God. Uh, in the book of Psalms, it talks about uh, uh, about the law of the Lord. It said, Blessed is the man, or happy is the man, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor uh, sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, what? I shall be in the law of the Lord. His delight shall be uh, in this Word of God. Let me ask you today, is your delight in the Word of God? Uh, is your delight in the Bible? Or do you just pick it up and read a few verses along? Uh, you know, this is the Bible. Uh, this has got power to it. This is a lie. The Bible said uh, in the book of Acts that the Word of God grew and it grew. And anything grows, it's got life to it. It has to be alive. And this has got life to it. Uh, because that uh, uh, it said, and he and uh, he delighteth in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Uh, not that he's got CNN or Fox News on his mind; he's got the Word of God on his mind. Uh, when he goes to bed, he's a thinking about the Scripture. Uh, when he gets up, he's a thinking about the Scripture. Uh, because that uh, you know, David said in one place, he said, "I'll hide his word in my heart." Uh, that I might not sin against God. Uh, and we, we need to... Uh, uh, let me ask you. If, uh, if something happened that all the Bibles, they took them up, uh, and they wasn't any uh, left, how much Bible would you know? Right. I mean, how, much, uh, how many verses could you quote? Would you know enough to uh, bring comfort out of your children or to the sick or somebody? And and we need to think about it uh, because that uh, uh, listen, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, when you're young, you need to memorize this book. You need to memorize scripture. Uh, you need to memorize it because when you get old, uh, it's hard to memorize, and it's hard to keep in your mind. Uh, and and I and I try to memorize some now, and I'll do it, and then a week later, it, I mean it's a. Uh, your mind is to, it's like the doctor told women, when you get old, your mind just draws up. Uh, uh, and uh, I guess uh, uh, the, the mind's drawn just way up uh, because uh, uh, when you're young, you need to memorize Scripture. And I'll tell you what, when you're young and you get something in your mind, he'll stay with you. Uh, he'll stay with you, uh, good and bad. I can remember jokes that I heard it wasn't fit to tell when I was in grade school. I mean, it's as plain as day. You say, well, you're a preacher. I bet, uh, well, I won't bet you, but I don't gamble, but I, I'd say that you're sitting there, you, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but, uh, but also, I remember things. I remember things that uh, my Sunday school teacher said. I remember things our principal used to take us to every Monday morning in the auditorium. He'd read God's Word, and he'd have prayer. And he had talked to us, and I still remember some of that. I still remember uh, some uh, 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 cards that I got during Sunday school. I know some of you old enough, probably you remember getting them little cards in uh, Sunday school. And by the way, I've got some at the house. Uh, I'll bring them and, and, show, and show you younger people that's never seen some. Uh, how that it used to be. And I remember the pictures on some of them. It's as plain as day. And we need to, uh, 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 boys and girls and young people, you need, uh, you need to memorize uh, the blessed Word of God. He'll stay with you. Uh, there'll be a time you may be a sitting in a hospital. Uh, you may be in a rest home. Uh, you may be where that you can't get a hold of the Bible and nobody to talk to you. And then that Word of God will come to you. There's something in that Bible uh, for everything that happens in life. There is the answer in that Bible uh, to everything that happens in life. Uh, and, uh, you know, 
uh, uh, people get saved by the Word of God. Uh, the Word of God is the, uh, uh, it is the best-selling book. It's been the best-selling book uh, that in every, uh, in every century, in every year, there's no book, there's not any books that's uh, uh, the ten bestsellers compared uh, together uh, can't sell along with the Bible, with the Word of God. Uh, when King James, uh, uh, when, he, when he translated this Bible uh, uh, from, uh, uh, well, you know, the first five books of the Bible, uh, uh, which is uh, in the Hebrew, it's called the Torah, and in the uh, Greek, it's called the Pentateuch. And that's all that they had for a long time. Even though they say that Job is the oldest book in the Bible, uh, I, I don't know, but uh, uh, they translated it. Uh, where that people could, uh, uh, where that people could, uh, 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 the common people could have, uh, before that King James translated this Bible, and then uh, it, was, uh, uh, it was so expensive, I mean, the, uh, it had to be written out uh, by hand, put on a scroll or on a hide or on, on a parchment, and it was so costly uh, that the average person uh, couldn't afford one. And uh, I've, uh, I've read where that uh, somebody would have a page or somebody would have a, 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 a parchment or a scroll with a scripture on it, and they'd trade it. They'd uh, uh, trade it for a calf to keep it a week or uh, something. But uh, you know, when God uh, inspired, this is an inspired book. It's not uh, written by. It's not written by. Uh, uh, but just one man. It's written by uh, men of old. The Bible says that was moved on by the Holy Ghost. Hey, uh, it's not men that was intelligent and. Uh, and educated and all of that. It was men that was moved on uh, by the Holy Spirit of God. And it's not understood by education. It's not understood by uh, human wisdom. It's understood uh, by the same Holy Spirit of God that moved on the men of old. Uh, moves on your heart when you read it. It learns you and it shows you and it opens up to you. I don't care how much education you got. I don't care how much you memorize. Uh, if the Spirit of God don't open it up to you, uh, it's a closed book to you. And He has to open it up. Uh, and you know, that Bible, uh, they was people died for it. Uh, in 1611 is when that, uh, uh, that, hit, that, that it come out. I've told you this. I've got a Bible that was... Uh, uh, printed in 1662. Now, not copyrighted, but it was printed. Uh, it's printed by Henry J. Fields in England. And uh, they, that's when the killing fields was going on. He was a killing people when they found them with a Bible. And, uh, you know, they, uh, 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 they, they burned them at the stake. They uh, uh, volatile. They, uh, he he uh, uh, put Christians on crosses and... Uh, and uh, 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 soaked them in coal oil and lit uh, the road with them. I mean, they even skinned them and made lampshades out of their skin. Uh, they took their children and put them uh, before bees, uh, before wild beasts to tear up, uh, trying to get them to renounce. If you were uh, found uh, the Word of God and then uh, you, uh, you was dead, they'd burn you at the stake. And I've told you this, and I'll tell you again because... Uh, it really touched my heart. Jewel Smith, he was a, a man, he knew more about the King James Bible than anybody uh, I've ever saw. And he had a museum. And in that museum, he had a, uh, he had a leg arm. Now, uh, when they burned people at stake, they would take them to a blacksmith. Uh, they would take hot iron and they would weld a cuff on their leg uh, with a chain on it. They'd tie it to the stake. Uh, to keep you from leaving while they was burning you. Now uh, uh, they a uh, blacksmith, and I've seen this, I've seen this happen. I've seen them do it. A uh, blacksmith can take hot iron and they'll put borax on it and they'll weld that together, uh, and it's welded just as good as if you'd have took an electric welder. And they heated that iron red hot and put it on their uh, uh, put it on their ankles and they welded it together. And the only way that you could get that off, I was to cut it off 
or to uh, die, and uh, they take it off you like. And he had a uh, he had a leg on, and it was welded together. And uh, and and when I seen that, that really done something to me. Uh, to know uh, that somebody died, uh, that uh, I could have a Bible uh, to carry around and read the word. And then it went on. Uh, it went farther than that. When I was thinking about somebody died, uh, that I could have a Bible, somebody died, uh, that I could be saved and know the Word of God uh, because Jesus Christ uh, died for me and many of us so uh, died that you and I can sit here tonight uh, with this Bible and, and I was wanting to pr- uh, talk on some other stuff, but, uh, to, the, but uh, we could sit here uh, uh, with this Bible in our hand of whom we're not worthy. Uh, you say, preacher, uh, let me read you some scripture over here in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Turn your Bible over there. It talks about the many heroes of faith. Verse 32, beginning with verse 30, And what shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, and of Samson, of Jephthah, and uh, David also and Simon and all the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises stopped the mouth of lions quenched the violence of fire escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness were made strong waxed valiant in fight turned to flight the armies of the aliens women received their dead raised to life again others were tortured not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better uh, resurrection and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourging, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder. You know, they said they put Isaiah in a holler log and took a saw and sawed him in two. They sawed the log in two with him on the inside. Now, they didn't have chainsaws back then. Uh, you think about an old cross cut uh, sawing through a log and somebody in it, how painful uh, uh, that would be. He said, they were sawn asunder, uh, were tempted, were slain with the sword. And they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Uh, that's what people went through that you and I could see here tonight uh, as Christians, as forgiven uh, people that knew, uh, know Jesus Christ as Lord, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens, and caves of the earth, and all have obtained a good report through faith, receiving not the promise. Right here is a scripture that you ought to underline. You ought to, uh, uh, phase one in Hebrews, you, you need to, and the Bible said in verse four, to God having provided some better thing for us, Amen. that they without us should not be made perfect. Did you know that as we are uh, the Apostle Peter said, lively stones made up in a building, and that building is perfect, and that it has to have every one that has been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus. Uh, this Bible, it tells us about the past. It tells us about the future. The Bible said in Psalms 119, it said, uh, For the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. A lamp will show you where you're at. It'll shine around you. And it'll let you see where you're at. The Word of God will let you see where you're at. And a light will shine the path before you. And you see, not only will it let us see where we're at, it'll let us see where we're going. And, uh, and uh, we see, uh, the Bible tells us in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, uh, and down about verse 12, I believe it is, said, Now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face. Now, uh, you say we was talking about heaven. Maybe. But I really believe that uh, when Paul wrote this, he said, we're seeing through a glass darkly. But when the scriptures come, we see more clearly. I mean, because we can see to the end. Now, when we get to heaven, we'll see perfectly. We won't be a sin more clear. We won't be a sin uh, uh, through a glass, but uh, but we we will see uh, more perfectly because that 
uh, that I mean everything will be uh, the Bible said that uh, the earth will be full of the knowledge as uh, water said I mean we'll get smart and won't even have to go to school uh, as the waters covers the sea and then knowledge will cover the earth and it's going to be so much different folks if you could ever get in it if we could ever get in it and realize what is going to come and what's ahead of us and it's not far out there it's not far if the Lord don't come I mean look around I mean I'm not being mean, but look around. Five years. You don't know how many of us would get. Ten years. Twenty, thirty, forty years. You don't, we don't know how many that it would get. And we've got a lot ahead of us, and we've got a lot in the future. But the Word of God, the Word of God will stand forever. Uh, you know, I like this King James Bible. Yes, amen. I'm going to stay with it. Uh, I know there's a lot of preachers use other stuff. A lot of preachers spend a lot of time uh, uh, telling you why that other stuff. It, hey, I mean, this works. I've seen it work. I felt it work. I know that it works. I don't know. I mean, how can you? How can you? Uh, how, can you how can you add to perfection? I believe this Bible is. I believe this Bible is without error. I believe it is inspired by God. I believe it is the Word of God, uh, given to the English speaking people. And I believe it's without mixture of error. I like what old Harold Sattler said. He said they talk about the uh, about the errors in the Word of God and the King James Bible. He said I've been a studying it for sixty six years, and I've not run across one error yet, and I feel just like it. I mean, when anything uh, when anything works, uh, you know, the Bible said in six days, or and uh, God created the heaven and the earth on the seventh day. He finished His work and rested. God wasn't wore out. God wasn't exhausted. Uh, what it was, when he rested, it was perfect. There wasn't nothing else to do. Oh, uh, When God created this thing, he created a perfect world, a perfect being, and perfect man and woman in the Garden of Eden. Uh, you can't add to perfection. And I don't think you can add to the Word of God. Uh, you know, and this may be kind of a crude illustration, but I like cornbread. If I just had one kind of bread, I'd take cornbread. You say, what about breakfast? Well, I like gravy and cornbread. I mean, uh, and uh, I just like cornbread. My grandma now, I used to go over and I was a little old boy. They had a fireplace and they had a hook that swung out and they uh, put a pot when they'd cook uh, pinto beans or soup or a stew or something, they'd put it in that pot over a fire. And my grandma would take and uh, rake coals on the hearth and she'd put a old Dutch oven on it and she'd and put some on the lid and she'd get that hot and she'd put the cornbread, make the cornbread uh, in that Dutch oven. Well, my mama, uh, she didn't use a Dutch oven, but she made cornbread the same way. Wilma, when me and her got married, she makes cornbread the same way. Now, I'm talking to a group of people here that knows about cornbread. I'll guarantee you that. Uh, uh, and, I, and I've eaten some of you corn. And, and hey, it all boils down to the same thing, the same way. I've not seen anybody hunting a recipe. I've not seen any of the ladies of this church hunting a new recipe for cornbread. Because, hey, uh, Cornbread, you just make it. <laughs> I mean, you 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 can't use uh, something else. You got to use meal. You know that woman at Zarephath, I, I believe, and they say 
I've heard people talk about making cakes. Well, I believe she made a cake of cornbread because she had meal and she had oil. And, and that's what it takes to make cornbread. You got to, uh, and, and, I, and I can make it. I ain't near as good as swim or some of you ladies, but uh, I, you can get by. And I found this out. Uh, you've got to have a little meat grease to put in your cornbread to really make it good. And, uh, uh, and, sh and she had a bottle of oil. And she, uh, but what I'm trying to say is, I don't know how, and I ain't saying cornbread's perfect, but I don't know how you'd improve on it. Amen. I just don't know how. I just don't know how that you could improve on the Word of God. Right. Because it is perfect. Amen. Nobody gets saved unless they hear the Word. Uh, I mean, <laughs> a person that don't use the Word ain't got no more religion about them than that light pole has there. It takes... It's not the personality of the person that's presenting the Word. It is the Word of God that quickens people. I mean, it's the Word of God that gets to their heart. I mean, how many times, how many times did you sit in church and hear a preacher preach? It never bothered you. I bet it one day, uh, maybe just a simple sermon, maybe a Sunday school teacher, maybe a testimony, and the Word of God come around, and it touched you. And God opened your heart. You see, the Bible said in, in, in the book of Romans chapter uh, 10, it said, And faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Personality don't get you saved. It takes the word of God. That's the reason we need to stay with the book. I, I don't think we got anything to worry about. I ain't seen, here, seen nobody wanting to uh, deviate from uh, this King James Bible, but... Uh, we need to drill it into our children. We need to uh, talk about it. We need to read it. We need to get it in our heart. We need, uh, uh, you know, God laid on our heart one time at prayer meeting. I uh, was reading about uh, uh, when uh, Nehemiah and Ezra, uh, you remember Ezra went back to rebuild the temple uh, at Jerusalem, and then Nehemiah came on uh, to rebuild the walls and the gates. But Ezra uh, went back to rebuild uh, the wall of the temple and start temple worship uh, uh, while they was uh, rebuilding the walls. And you know what Ezra done? They made him a pulpit and he stood in the street and he read the word of God and the people said amen and amen. I mean, there's nothing said. I don't know where he preached like uh, uh, Brad or, or Harold or, or uh, David or somebody would. Uh, but he read the word of God and, I, and God laid it on my heart and I told him, I said, uh, for the next few weeks, we're going to uh, come to prayer meeting and we're going to pray. And I'm not going to preach and I'm not going to ask anybody to preach. Uh, we just read the Word of God. You'd be surprised how much power that it had in just reading the Word of God. Just reading it. Because that's where the power is. It is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And well... I was going to, I had seven things here I was going to talk about tonight. He said, now let's go ahead and talk about all of them. Nah. <laughs> uh, he said, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Testimony of the Lord is sure. Testimony of the Lord is sure. You can believe it. It said, making wise the simple. Bible said, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth liberally, and that braideth not. That means to ask to God, he'll not laugh at you and make fun of you. And I pray all the time, God, and I know I'm simple and I, and I know and, and, and honest. Uh, I want to, when I preach, I, I, I want to be so simple. I want to bring the Word of God clear. I want to bring it as it is in the Bible, but I want, I don't want to get to where that little boys and little girls can't understand what I'm talking about. Uh, I mean, hey, uh, I like to hear, uh, I like to hear deep and, um, and boy out yonder preaching. And it's good, but really what we need is just a simple 
Word of God. People are right. starving to death right. just to hear the Bible. Right. I remember several years ago, I got a call uh, from a church, and uh, it was in a college. Well, I tell you, it was close to Marseille. A lot of the college professors went to church. And this preacher, he called me for revival, and uh, I, I wasn't, uh, well, I wasn't what he thought it was anyway. But I went for revival, and boy, I got thinking about it. I told him I'd come, and then I told him, I said, hey, let a lot of them professor stuff go there. I don't know. And, and it worried me. And then I said, I'm going over our neck like some kind of holy. So I'm going to get prayed up and studied up, and, and, and I did. First, uh, first night, they wouldn't have hardly a dozen there. And boy, the Lord, uh, uh, the Lord just come in, and maybe some got around the altar and got right with God, and and uh, and it, it went on that week. And, and and to make a long story short, we had to, uh, they had to carry out chairs on Friday night and sit in the vestibule. And and you, you know I ain't much of a preacher. I just preached the word of God and and tried uh, to bring the word of God. And I don't know how many got saved. And it, it was just that simple. And I heard they had me up there uh, uh, shaking hands. And that preacher told me, he said, Preacher, you scared me to death. I said, what do you mean? He said, I didn't know how my folks was going to accept that. I said, I really didn't care. <laughs> and, and I didn't. I mean, I, I was preaching the Bible. I wasn't uh, hitting, uh, striking on nobody. And I don't know how many uh, we was baptized. And I heard one of them ladies, she was a, a teacher out at the college, and I heard her tell a pastor, said, you better book him for next year or he'll be filled. And I didn't have nothing else, no time. But it was just a simple, it wasn't me. It was just a simple word of God that the Holy Ghost had touched. And it worked. I guess it was maybe two or three years later, me and women stopped out at the steakhouse. And they had a steakhouse at Marseille. I was going to ISO. We would went in the bathroom, washed her hands, and I beat women out, and I come out and sit down. There was a, a young woman come up, and she uh, said, uh, can I sit down? And I said, yeah, it, it hit yourself. And she sat down about the time women come out, and she said, do you remember me? And I said, no, I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, she said, I got saved uh, out of the revival that you preached. And she said, I'm graduating from college. And she said, it really changed my life, and I just wanted to stop. And tell you, I appreciate you uh, preaching the word, yeah, preaching the Bible. Yes. And folks, listen. Uh, it says simply the word of God. Amen. Study it. Read it. Memorize it. Think about it. Uh, you know, it's a mind thing. You know, and, and I've harped on that, and, and you've heard it. It's a... Uh, we're fighting a mind battle now. And what, whatever you think about is what's, uh, how you're going to be. The Bible says, man thinks his heart, so is he. And it goes through your mind first and then into your heart. Now, you've got a choice. You don't have to think on ungodly stuff. I mean, uh, if you watch ungodly stuff, if you listen to ungodly stuff, it's going to enter your mind. You can't help what enters your mind. I have some terrible thoughts sometimes. Uh, and you do too. Uh, I mean, you can't help from having terrible thoughts. But you can help from entertaining them and take them into your heart and keep it thinking on them. And if you'll feel, I mean... There's a, we learned in school, and I reckon it's so, no two objects can occupy the same space at the same time. So, if you're filled up with the Word of God, there ain't no room for the world and the devil in there. Just fill yourself up with the Word of God, with the Bible. Forget about all this stuff. I, I mean, the devil come around and and he'll want you to argue. He'll, he'll let you listen to somebody uh, that believes completely different than you do. And may, they may be plumb off base, but the devil will keep bringing that to your mind. Put that out of your mind. Don't listen. Don't watch the ungodly stuff. Because you, I've heard people say, well, I can listen to this or I can watch this and it don't bother me. I don't believe that. 
Because the devil catch you at a weak point and he'll bring that and put it right in your mind. I'm going to hush before you go to sleep. But it's good. It's good. Uh, take the Word of God and renew yourself in it. Uh, wear that Bible out. I mean, I guess we ought to wear one out every two or three years anyhow, right. hadn't we? But uh, wear it out. Don't leave it laying around the sun, curl the back set, leaving it in a car. Just wear it out. Take it in the house with you. And uh, I've been accused of Bible worship, but I'm not a Bible worshiper. I'm a God of the Bible worshiper. And, and I'm particular about my Bible. Wim will tell you, I don't lay nothing on my Bible but my glasses. If somebody lays something on my Bible, I get it off. And you say, well, that's particular you're just, hey, I ain't too particular that's God's work and uh, and uh, and I don't want nothing else on it but anyway anybody got anything before we go anybody got any announcements Matt? talked to a fellow last night uh, I hadn't seen him in, I guess I've seen about every five years but I went to revival and he wanted to thank us for uh, during COVID having our services on online. He said our church couldn't do it and he chimed in to ours and he was very thankful. He told me three times I guess in ten minutes I think that he lost that we had our service on the year in Georgia. And he wanted to, to thank him. So yeah. I told him I'm his yeah. He really appreciated what we did during that time. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you this and, and uh, it cleared something up for me. These, uh, <clears throat> where women works up there, a lady comes up there and gets her car worked on, and she's from, uh, where are women, Cuba? Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. She's a very intelligent woman. She's, a, a, she's an interpreter. She knows, I've, I've got several different languages, and she worked for the government. So she's really intelligent, but she's a Catholic. So I've always wondered about, I've heard them say that Catholics pray to Mary. Well, she was in there talking to him the other day, and I said, well, here's my chains. And I asked her, I said, Marie, I asked you a, 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 a personal question about your religion. She said, yeah. And I asked her, I said, I've always heard that Catholic people pray to Mary. I said, do you pray to Mary or Jesus? She said, no, sir. She said, we respect Mary, but we pray to Jesus. She said, I take everything to Jesus. And, and we talked a, a good while, and, and uh, I don't reckon she lied to me. And uh, uh, I'd always wondered about that, and I'd always heard it. And you know, we hear a lot of stuff that really ain't so. We hear a lot of stuff and make judgment that really ain't so. But anyway, uh, I know that'll keep you thinking all week. <laughs> Amen. Anything else before we go? If not, ain't nothing happened, ain't nothing going to happen, ain't got no announcements, we'll uh, pray, let us stand. Grayson, you pray with us.